Hey, welcome. I am JD Adedeji. I'm the lead pastor here at House of Abundance in San Antonio, Texas. I want to welcome you to a house of power. I want to welcome you to an experience that you probably read about in the book of Acts, for instance. I want to welcome you to what it is that is missing in you, that you wondered where and how, as a Christian, where did all that go? Well, guess what? Here at House of Abundance, we are still spirit-filled. We are still powerful, and the presence of God is still heavy. I am saying to you that even as you stay on and watch this service, that you by the end will say indeed of a truth that Jesus is still Lord. No matter what is going on in your life, I can assure you with Jesus Christ, the true son of the living God, everything's going to be fine. Welcome again to House of Abundance, where the power of God is brought in because of his presence and his promises are therefore available. God bless you and welcome again. Hi, I'm Pastor Chad, and I'd like to personally invite you to come join us next Sunday for worship and service. We are located at 3655 Fredericksburg Road here in San Antonio, Texas. I look forward to seeing you. church good morning house of abundance happy easter to you take a moment and just welcome your neighbor to the house of the lord tell him he is risen This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will be glad in it. Yeah, I thank God this morning. I just woke up by reflecting on the resurrection, reflecting on the victory that we have in Christ. And really what the Bible tells us is that in Ephesians chapter 4, the Bible says that he took captivity captive. In other words, everything that has held you back, anything that has restricted you, in anything that has oppressed you, the resurrection really points to the fact that Jesus turns things around and he takes them captive. And my prayer this morning is that we will come to the revelation of what his resurrection means for us. Father, open the eyes of our understanding. Let us see that which Christ has already taken hold of for us. Let us be partakers of what Christ has already paid that we may receive this morning. Let yokes be destroyed. Let curses be broken. Because that is what the cross was all about and that is what resurrection is all about. That we have been reconciled to the Father. And this it pleased Jesus to do. 
So we thank you, we honor you, we give you praise. We love you, we exalt you. Rise up on your feet with me this morning as we worship him. I wave at your neighbor. Tell them welcome to the house of the Lord. Smile at them. Let the joy of the Lord fill this temple. Rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. One thing that I want to say Thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord For all you've given to me For all the blessings that I cannot see With a grateful heart, with a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I'll bless your name. Thank you, Lord. that we may stand this morning. Sing thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart. With a grateful heart. With a song of praise. With an outstretched arm. I'll bless your name. I just wanna thank you, and I just wanna thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just wanna thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just wanna 
Thank you for your goodness, Father. Thank you for your grace and for who you are to us. Yeah. 
Father, we give you praise. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you for your mercy. You are high and lifted up, exalted above all. Worthy, worthy, worthy to receive our praise. Oh, holy, holy. You're the reason one thing. You are awesome, God of power, Lord of glory. Come and feel this place. You are awesome.
bless you, Father. We give you the glory. We honor your name. We love you, Jesus. seated in heavenly places this morning you're the one who has conquered the powers of sin and death you're the one who reigns above all yours is the name that's above all names that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue confess for you have been given the name that's above all seated in heavenly places Father, you reign and there is none like you. Calling on the name of Jesus. Giving glory to your holy name. One more time, just the voices. You reign. You reign. Yes, you are. You reign. You reign. You reign. Yes. Give him a shout of praise, hallelujah. Give a shout of praise to him who's risen again. To you who sits a throne in heaven, we give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 Happy Easter, he is risen. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just might say how amazing everyone looks up here this morning and sounded even better. <laughs> I'm going to have you guys stay up here while we do the tie this morning. So I get the privilege and honor to stand on this altar this morning and to do something I thought in my lifetime I would never, ever do. And that is take an offering. 
Oh, well, many years ago, I used to think those churches just want my money. <laughs> Matter of fact, I had a guy this week who uh, was telling me, he said, Chad, I have a lot of guys that reach, have been reaching out to me the last few years. And this guy was, uh, he was in my, my truck. He goes, why can't my business just be successful like his? Why can't, I, I see my, my cousin buying new trucks and buying this and his business is booming and, and he's just doing all these things. And he quit going to church because he said that they just want my money. And so he quit going to a, a, a church and he told him that. And he said, Chad, how come, how come that he gets to do that and I'm struggling and I go to church? And he just wanted to be successful. He goes, I just want to be successful. And I told him, I said, until the man is resolved, until a man is settled in himself that Jesus is Lord, and the one way to test that in a, in a man of God or woman of God is through our finances. When money doesn't become that important to me anymore, when I become obedient, and I, and, and I told him, I said, God's pressuring you because you belong to him. You sense that, that pressure. And he said, um, and to hear another Christian, so-called Christian say, well, I don't have to tithe that I'm being blessed, see? You see, Satan can bring blessing and anointing and make it look like it's from heaven, especially when you're not in the word. Come on. So we had this talk and um, he, he understands and he's working on it. But you know what? If God isn't pressuring you and you're struggling with tithe, Thank God he's pressuring you. You feel that. Because if you didn't feel anything, would you really belong to him? Would you? I, um, I, I'm going to tell you a quick story. I remember a man telling me that he was always a tither and had been greatly blessed because of, because of it while he worked on his salary. He had saved up his money enough to go into business, and his business was prosperous from the beginning. Instead of being able to, t to give 25 or $30 a month, he was enabled to give several hundred, and the temptation was strong to cut his giving down. He was an honest man, and he prayed much about it. Finally, he caught the vision and promised God he would give a tenth, and then he began to give offerings beside the tenth. When I last saw him, he had instead of one small store, he had three large stores. The hand of God was upon him in a very rich way. I knew another that had received several thousand dollars from his mother's estate. He had tied in, it in his small way until his large amount came. He and his wife discussed it and prayed about it. Much of it until finally they decided that this was a gift and they dared to give God his share. Then he, came, then he became their partner in a sense they had never known. You see, when God becomes your partner, watch out. He tells us that he wants us to bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food for the poor, for the needy. He says, I want you to prove me. He says, I want you to prove to me if I will not pour you out a blessing that you are unable to receive. And that's, I'm bringing this from Malachi 3.10 through 11. It says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there may be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord, heaven's armies of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. <laughs> Your crops will be abundant, for I will guard them from insects and disease. Your, your grapes will not fall from their vine before they are ripe, says the Lord of heaven's armies. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. I love that. I love that. God is looking out for us. We're actually looking at trying to buy a building and move our business. And you know what? When I meet men that try to take advantage of me, you know what I say? watch out watch out you know I've seen great great things come with with being obedient through tithe and it doesn't happen that next that exactly that moment but it might take a year but it, God has never let me down 
ever let me down. And I would never, I came to town in 06 with nothing. And I'm looking at buying a building today for our business. And you know, God, God sent around me a CPA, a, an attorney, and these are all, and another, a, a real estate investor, and another man that's here today, an investor friend of mine, I had four men gather around me at a, at a one drop of a call to ask, I just wanted their opinion. And through a, a, a man with many advisors never fails. You see, God brought me guys to help me see that I was potentially walking into a trap that the enemy had set for me. You see, he's faithful and he rebukes the devourer. Amen? Amen. Join me in prayer. So we're going to do the tithe. We're continuing to do this. We really like it. So we do the tithe up front now. Just like uh, they brought the, the, the offering to the priest. They would come into the altar and lay their offerings in, these th in the baskets. And so that's what we do. And the reason is we don't take offering at the end so that we have time at the end. If Holy Spirit wants to heal, he wants to, whatever he wants to do, we have time without having to take an offering. So we're gonna, I'm going to pray real quick, and then we're going to receive the offering as the music plays, and then we're going to get on with this Resurrection Sunday. Heavenly Father, I just thank you in advance. I thank you for Jesus. And Jesus, as you were reminding me yesterday, you were the perfect example of how to live. You were in a temple just like mine, and you struggled with disappointments. You struggled with broken, seeing men disappoint you but you always always went and were connected to the vine in the quiet times with your father and i thank you for the example and i thank you that you rose and you have resurrection on this day 2021 years ago i thank you for your example and i thank you for the power of your holy spirit that enables me to walk <laughs> in this resurrection life father we receive the offering today so that we may do with it whatever it is you say. Father, we love you. Bless this offering in Jesus' name. Amen. visitors this morning welcome welcome we have a we have a small bag to uh, welcome you um, if you could stay a little bit after the service pastor JD would love to meet you so just a couple of quick announcements Monday mornings we start off your week with prayer it's command your week and it begins at 6 a.m. on zoom we encourage you to get up and join us and receive a blessing and pray for others Tuesday nights here at House of Abundance and on Facebook Live at 6.30, Pastor Patrick Kelly and his wife Cindy host Bridge. So any young married, old married, anybody about to marry, please join us and find out what the Bible says about marriage. Wednesday evenings at 6.30, Mama Remy has Bible study on Facebook Live. Please do not miss, miss this. And um, <clears throat> I had March. Uh, April, I believe it's the third uh, Friday of every month, Advent. Pastor J.D. has house, uh, here at House of Abundance and on Facebook Live has Advent at 7 to 10 p.m. Prayer Vigil is last Friday of the month from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. And Friday night prayer is 6.30 p.m. every other Friday except for Advent night. Ladies of Adasa meet here at House of Abundance first Saturday of the month and at 1 p.m. on the third Saturday of the month on Zoom. 
House of Abundance Men of Valor meet here um, every first Saturday of the month at 9 a.m. So if you need any additional information or have any questions, please get with me after service. Thank you so much. So before he makes fun of me, we, we played, played, we went bowling yesterday. I, I've forgiven him anyway. <laughs> And he, he beat me real bad. He let me feel like I was winning. <laughs> you reign, you reign. Yes, you are, you reign. You reign, you reign. Yes, you are, you reign. King of kings. Lord of Lords, you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, yes, you reign, you reign, yes. I want you to feel free while we sing the song to write our prayer request, whatever you want God to do for you, and put it in this box. This is a sign of faith and of a belief system that there is nothing that this God cannot take care of. You know, when you say someone reigns, it's, it's beyond, beyond, beyond what any man can think, beyond whatever it is. And I don't care whether it's a headache or whatever it is, God has promised that whatever comes into this box, he will be taken care of. This was something that was given to me many, many months ago. I don't know if anybody remembers that. And, and I pushed it to the back. Just plain forgot. And, and I got a call this weekend from someone close to me. And he, he said, God told him to say to me that there's a box that's supposed to be on that altar. Where people's requests are supposed to be written and put in. And I told him, I said, you know, may God forgive us all, including the pastors who forget so whatever it is that is a mountain in front of your life, whatever it is that is, is like uh, the wall of Jericho, something that you know it takes God only. Mm, you reign, you reign, yeah. You are Victory, you are. 
great man in battle. You are the mighty man of war. You reign, you reign. Yes, you are, you reign. Yeah, you reign, you reign. Yes, you are, you reign. You reign. Ha ha. Yes. Yes, you are. You are. Yes, you are. He says, I am the Lord of the universe. There is absolutely nothing that's so difficult for me. That which you see today that causes your heart to grieve. The Lord says that you will see the same thing and it will cause your heart to rejoice. Whatever is a stumbling block in front of your life becomes a stepping stone. The things that is going on in your life will shock not just your enemies, it will shock you. Says once I have spoken, twice I have heard. All power belongs to Him, not by might, not by power, but by His Spirit. We're going to sing that song one more time, and I want you to visualize that you are in front of a throne, and, and as you visualize that you're in front of a throne. I want you to see the angel going back and forth. And I want you to see the elders as they take off their crown and begin to throw it in front of him. And all he wants you to do is to just step in and join them. Let him be who he is. Exchanges that have taken place upon that cross, they are yours. It's paid for. It's paid for. He took all your sin. He took your sickness. He took your poverty. Your worry. <laughs> Whatever it is, and he nailed it as he took it upon himself don't be like me don't be like me for years I knew what to do but I just didn't and everything that came upon me I blamed everybody else That's why the first thing he told me when I gave my life fully and said, Lord, use me. He said, stay in your own lane. Don't measure your life by any other man. But as you look unto me, as you look unto me, I will give to you that which you need. So I want you to just, just speak to yourself now with the eye of faith. Forget anybody, forget your husband, forget your wife. Believe me, you are not going to be in front of him at the end with them. You came separately, you are going separately. He reigns, he reigns. Oh, yes, you are, you reign. He reigns.
kings, Lord of lords, you swallow death in victory. Yeah, the spot says, You are the mighty man in battle. You are the mighty man of war. He fights your battle. Exodus 14 14 says, Be, be at peace. Let, release him to do what he does. Let him do. There's no vengeance you can come up with for your enemy like what he can come up with. Is, is there by any chance someone here who's not too sure you're not too sure of your stance with God uh, yeah I was like people will say you do this after your sermon I don't believe in that I do it when I feel it but eventually there's someone in here that that and I just want you to raise up your hand. All eyes closed. All eyes closed. If you just just need assurance, assurance that if anything were to happen today, you know where you're going. That's what this is all about. That's why he came. That's why the cross is for. It's not so that you can hear how much I can speak or preach. That you may be reconciled to him. If that is you, just raise up your hand wherever you are. Thank you for that hand. Thank you for that hand. Thank you for that other hand. Just, just feel free. This is before your God the Father. This is we're not a show, we're not a production. about it today's a glorious day if you will take it and I thank God for those hands I, I, I believe there's about two more hands you know sometimes God will speak to you and tell you what's going to go on thank God for that hand I know there's one more hand somewhere you He wants to take over your problems. He wants to take it over. He wants to take over that heart that has been broken many times. All eyes closed. Pastor Chad, please move to that gentleman. He had his hand up. Pastor John, Pastor Patrick, please come. Pastor John, the lady over there. Uh, I'm trying not to give too much because I really don't want it to be about somebody else's business. Let's pray in tongues, please. Quiet, pray in tongues. If you had your hand up, please give me just show your hand and, and just and whoever is Whoever is up in, 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 on TV or on Facebook, 
just put your hand upon your head or upon your chest. Father, we just thank you. We thank you that today as we celebrate this resurrection, that these lives are resurrected. Satan, we say, take your hands off of this one. The Bible says at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. I speak to whatever is holding you bound. Whatever is in you that is holding you bound, I cast it out now in the name of Jesus. I come against whatever is calling ailment in your lives. Librado Shekaba, the blood of Jesus speaks for you right now. The blood of Jesus speaks for you right now. It touches you right now, cleanses you right now. I come in the name of the Most High God. And we speak to whatever is unholy inside of you. Let it be uprooted now in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. Thank you, mighty one. Hallelujah. King of kings, Lord of lords, you reign in your majesty. You reign, you reign. Yes, you are. Just one more time. celebrating today his resurrection I see a lot of people sending things back and forth but you see until you accept him until you do his bidding then it's, it's like somebody selling everything and using the money to buy you a gift and brings you the gift and you take the gift you accept it but you never use it as far as he's concerned, he's done what he was supposed to do. He's all done. That's why he said it is finished. And whatever is in your life today that is not working, it's not because he didn't finish the work. Amen. You know, today is a day that I, I just want to worship him because of all that he did. Thank you, ladies and, and gentlemen. God is moving. God is moving. He will complete in your lives all he has said. 
In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. I, I want to greatly rejoice with those who give their lives or came back. or Because sometimes, uh, especially if you're like me, yeah, you can put it in there. If you're like me, I was, I was a professional altar goer. I, I went to the altar most of the time. And by Tuesday, I picked up my sins again. Until God gave me an encounter. An encounter is, is, is what takes away every doubt in your life. You know, you can be in church and you, you, you go to church every Sunday and actually it's just routine. You can be in church all your lives and still be going to hell just from church. So I, I want to appeal to everyone to understand why we do what we did just now so that all of us can reap the benefits of today. I will tell the story. If, if, if my son and his friends run into my house, and my son goes straight to the refrigerator. If you've seen my son, you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> and he opens the refrigerator and, and he pulls out whatever he wants. And I walk out. He doesn't even look at me. Why? He's in his father's house. Everything in that refrigerator is his. And so he, he is comfortable with it. But his friend that runs in with him sees what my son just did and then he goes to the refrigerator and pulls it open and I walk out and I look at him. Now if he's a bold one, it will just take maybe water. But because nothing in there really belongs to him. Now, now we can take it a little further. And then I walk back into my bedroom and my son follows me. To the holy of holies. That guy comes. He's, he's following and then he sees. Uh-uh. I don't qualify. If you're in this room and you don't qualify. Mm -hmm. You see that's why going to church is not. Many come but they can't enter in. And that's why we have to take care of some things. So that we can all enter into the Holy of Holies. Why? Jesus made that possible. He paid the price. So you don't, you don't, have, you don't, have, you don't, you don't even need a pastor to go into the Holy of Holies. Don't let pastors lie to you. They like to make it sound like without them you can't enter in. It's a lie. You can it's good to have a pastor because we're, we're, we're there to guard, to guide, to nourish, to do all those things. But you see, if you already have it, you can go in. Now, don't use that as an excuse not to come to church. Yeah, because the Bible says that we are to gather together. See, he, he doesn't let you do one and then you can cancel the other. Like people who are still using COVID as an excuse not to come to church. This church never shut down. And we didn't lose one. And I'm not saying that all churches go and do that. No. I'm just saying that this is what we were told. Do a, How many days fast did we do? And then somebody increased it. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying is this. He, he, he tells you what to do. For every situation in your life. But the first thing you have to do is to accept him as your Lord and Savior. Lord, that's a word that the United States don't really understand. By the way, this is what happens. This isn't what he told me to do. I wanted to preach. He's just speaking. <laughs> because people need to hear this. When someone is your Lord, what does it really mean? Let me give you a good example. 
when someone is your Lord, you both go out, you both work together, you come home, and he sits down, and you're both tired, and then he says, go fix me something to eat. Do you tell him you're tired? Do you tell him, what do you mean? We just went out together. No. Lord means he tells you what to do, and you do it without any questions. And you do it without what? Any questions. So the truth is this. What he has spoken, and he says, those who love me, this is how he gauges it. Those who love me will do what I say. He says, you can't say you love me and you don't do what I say. You can't say he's the Lord of your life and you don't do what he says. Is he Lord? We already know he's Savior. See, that's the thing. Today, everybody's dancing because he's Savior. My, my, my WhatsApp is full of people sending different... Uh, <laughs> People just forward those things. You know, yeah, boom, yeah, boom. Yeah, how many of they mm. Because we all rejoice his Savior. He has come as Savior. The question is, is he Lord? Because that's really what it's about. One of the things we don't do in a HOA, someone said I stopped in HOA, it's not a home association. <laughs> one of the things I want you to understand here is that we will tell you the truth in love why because Jesus said he said the words you've given me he said I lost none we want to be able to say that that the ones you sent to this house if it's 20 we know these 20 understand not only do they understand but they walk victoriously that when the enemy is going around, when the devil is going around, when he gets to your house, he says, ah, excuse me, uh, let's go to this one. Right. Right. And, but, but by the way, that is scriptural because people always say, how come you think you're better than anybody else? Yes, we are. The days when I used to say, no, we're, not, we're all the same. We're not the same. Right. We are not the same. Why? Because there is something that I did that you haven't done. So you can't tell me we're the same. Now, if you look at it from, from earthly ways, it's good to say we're all the same. But this Bible does not say that. But we all have the same opportunity. He died for all. But it's for you to accept. So, you know, this Resurrection Sunday, that power that raised him is available. But it's available to those who accept him as Lord. The title of my sermon today is, is Here Comes the Son. S-O-N. S-O-N. Here Comes the Son. When the Son is in your life, when he shows up, where does he find you? Something happened two weeks ago from this altar. God said, raise, raise an offering for, for, the, for, for the band. And, and some of the guys that used to be in the band never showed up. And someone asked me, said, so, so do we spread this to them? I said, absolutely not. That's not how God works as much as you would like to think otherwise. See, the fair thing, according to man, is to send it looking for them. No. Did he open the door for the young maidens that didn't have oil? Did he? They kept knocking. Open this door. He said, I don't think so. God warned me a long time ago. He said, stop trying to love people more than I love them. You can't. Say, I am love itself. You can love people and misdirect them. A lot of parents do that. They hold back. Oh, I don't want to hurt his feelings. So I hold back. I don't want to hurt. Ah. That's why you need to study the word. If 
not, you will be in my office years from today. We are praying for that same child. Because you refuse to discipline them today. According to the word. Amen. See, Jesus came because God allowed it. It was love. Ultimate sacrifice. He, he sent his son. Why? That you and I might be able to be reconciled back to him. Why did he say, I love him too much. I can't let him go through the pain. Because the truth is, I disciplined my son last week and I felt the pain. And I didn't spank him. Don't think I was like that. That doesn't work with him. He's, he's 13 and he's 6'2". I'll be hurting myself. <laughs> but you see, the thing is this. When, when I was there, I, I sat down afterwards and I was going over because I said to him and I meant it. If, if I were to spank you, I would hurt you. But it wasn't about the spanking. See, it's about the correction. Whenever the punishment does not get the correction, don't do it. Can I say that again? Whenever the punishment will not get you the correction, don't do it. See, God allowed it because he knew that at least some of us will come back to him. But not all. Today is a great day to celebrate. When I was young, oh boy, you, when we get to church, you will see, you know, remember those, those dresses that, that comes straight down here and then pew. <laughs> All mothers put them in different colors, their daughters, with, you know, all these uh, bows, you know, and all that. And everybody comes, it's Easter. <laughs> ah, it's Easter, all right? And you ask those children, what's Easter about? I said, it's where we all dress up real nice. Many of us have missed it. When the sun shows up, what do you... When he showed up, what did, what did, what did John the Baptist say? He said, the next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And then he did something that many of us can't do. He began to die to himself. He began to humble himself. Because until you learn how to humble yourself, the Son of God cannot be magnificent. He cannot begin to show. He cannot begin to, to, to operate in your life. He's too much of a gentleman. He said, here, here he is. And he had to say that. If you look at it, he had to say that because there's a wrong son that could be out there. Have you ever seen wrong children? My father taught me something. I talk a lot about my father. Please don't bear with me. He's my hero. <laughs> he used to say, when a house is peaceful, it's because the bastard has not shown his face. That's deep. But many people don't understand it. That's why I speak the way I do. I used to hang around old people. My best friend was a 70-year-old man. Professor Denny. I say hang around old people. Pastor Chad is an old guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's older than me by two months. <laughs> Hallelujah. But what, what he meant was that there is peace until the people who don't have an understanding of what it takes for peace to be, begin to rise up. Look around you in this country now. The bastards are rising up. You have to understand that, and there's nothing that has caught God by surprise. Nothing. He says here, John 1, 33 to 34. 
John 1, 33 to 34. Because many people say, how did he know that was Jesus? He says, I didn't know he was the one. But when God sent me to baptize with water, he told me, the one on whom you see the Spirit descend and rest is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I saw this happen to Jesus. So I testify that he is the chosen one of God. See, even John the Baptist did not know how that was going to take place. He only knew that he was doing his part. Do you do your part? You see, a, a good production is that way because everybody does their part. You don't, you don't say, I, 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 I know I'm supposed to be the right hand, but today I want to be the left leg. You cause a lot of problems. And that's why he says, stay in your lane. Don't look at anybody's way. Don't say these people, like that guy you were talking about, sir. He's not, he says his business is not making it, but he's looking at somebody else who's making it. Whoever that guy is that's making it, you don't know what they're doing. My children know. One of the first things they understood growing up was mind your own business. My daughter is smiling. Because, you know, we're taught, especially in the West, to mind everybody else's business. <laughs> so, so we don't look at ourselves. It, 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 it's one of those things that we've, we've, been, we've been taught. So it's everybody, you know, I didn't get this when I was young. That's why I'm this. I, I didn't go, you didn't do this for me. That's why. No, no, no. Pick up your own cross. John knew that he was done as soon as Jesus showed up. See, God himself, if you look at Matthew 3, Matthew 3, 16 to 17. Matthew 3, 16 to 17. God himself confirmed Jesus. Why? Because, you, can, you see, a bastard can't do what a son, a hare, is allowed to do. Never. Never. So they had to let you know that this was the one, the Messiah. So God says, says, after his baptism, hear this, as Jesus came out of the water, the heavens were opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, settling on him. That's what he had told John to look for. And then a voice from heaven said, this is my dearly beloved son who brings me great joy. Now, now when I begin to, to read that, God knew that his son was going to the cross. And yet he said it brings him great joy. Can you imagine him being up there Having sent his son, and you don't have time for him. Just imagine God is looking at you. And he knew what he had to do. And here you are, too busy. For many, too smart. I was one of those guys. I was too cool. I, could, I didn't have time. That's why today I'm praying for an encounter for every single one of you. When you have an encounter, believe me, if they put a gun to your head, you will say, Jesus is Lord. Amen? So why did God have to do this? God had to send his son to rescue you. Because another one like us, Adam, lost everything. He blamed his wife like many of us. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> I won't go there. But, <sighs> no, but I pray for you wives. 
you know. The husband has a way of uh, throwing you under the bus. You say, okay, gentlemen, can we meet here at 10? And they stroll in at 10.30. And I know the first thing they're going to say. See, my, my wife was, okay, I hear you. <laughs> Hallelujah. God sent his only son, John 3.16. We all know it. We all know it. We all read it. But you see, the truth is this. We've gotten so used to it, it doesn't really mean anything to most people anymore. John said, he said, God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world, but through him. And that's a problem. Now, there are some things I had to deal with. For instance, I, I, have, a, I have a grandmother that I love a lot, but she was a Muslim. I know, I'm shocking some people. Hey, you have a Muslim in your life? Oh, yeah. I say how many? Well, they're not all terrorists, by the way. <laughs> I would like to tell, tell people that, you know, so a lot of you don't understand that whole thing. So we stay out of it. I don't want to bring that in. But I'm just saying to you, I love her so much that for years I used to question, how can somebody so good not make heaven? Because that's part, of, that's part of what you guys all think. I, I was talking to somebody yesterday, right, Pastor? She said, I'm a good person. I do good. And I said, that's great. But you know, you can't, you can't go into a basketball NBA game and decide you're going to make your own rules. Oh, I'm so good. And you carry the ball. You don't bounce it. And you just... <laughs> And people begin to say, no, 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 I, no. You don't understand. I'm a good person. You see, that's what we all try, many people are trying to do. You, you want to tell God what he has to do. Not even in my house. Ask my children. I'm the king of my house. You can't even do what you want in my house. Yeah, now people are saying, I'm not going to pastor's house. <sighs> but you see, the thing is this. We, we, we miss it trying to tell you who created us. How to rule what he created. You know how stupid that is? <laughs> so, so, if you look at Colossians 1, 20 to 22. See, the assignment given to Jesus, Jesus knew it, and everything, by the way, that he did was all to get to that assignment. The healing that we all talk about, the demons that he, all of that was just to get to that place. He didn't come so that he can give you miracles. Miracles was just, you know, like when you, you go to eat and you pay for a complete meal, they'll give you the main course, everything else comes with it. Right? Pastor? We, we demolished some, some steaks yesterday, so and then everything that came with it, we, could, we had no space. <laughs> That's why I tried to eat my dessert before the main meal. Right. <laughs> he says in Colossians 1, 20, and through him, through who? Jesus Christ. Not your professor. Not the billionaires. See, because this, there's this thing that people think, because you have billions, that means that you have sense. I can prove you wrong any day. That's why I don't ask my, my friend who's a surgeon to fix my car. He will mess it up. He can work on human beings, but put him on the car, he can't do it. So never, never, never put somebody, because they're good at making chairs, now you're going to make them make tables. <sighs> he said, and through him, Jesus Christ... God reconciled everything to himself through him. That's why you can say God all you want anywhere in the world. People are okay. You say Jesus. And all hell breaks loose. 
Because it's difficult. I told you I had a problem with it. It's difficult for you to accept that only by one man all the earth will be saved. But when you have an encounter, it will be settled. He says here, he made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. That's the reason why he came. See, I have, I have a lot of people that, that want to live by signs, wonders. That's great, but that's not it. As a matter of fact, God began to show me that if you look at it, that is nothing. Nothing. To heal you is nothing to him. Because if he heals you and you miss eternity, that's the problem he has. So all that we are, that resurrection we are all screaming and shouting about is about you making eternity. The byproducts will come. The byproducts will what? Will come. But you have to get the real deal. You can't miss it. It's so important, especially now. He says, this includes you who are once far away from God. That's you and I. He says, you are his enemies. That is God's enemies. Separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. You still think you're good? (laughs) He says, your goodness is like filthy rags before him. This goodness you all talk about. There's only one that's good. Yet now, he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence. You can come in any time. You can come in any time. You can have God and all of him any time. You wake up in the middle of the night, just kneel by your bed, and he will come. You're in your car, you're driving. Things seem like it's bad. You say, Jesus, he's there. The Holy Spirit is there. Is your ever-present help in times of trouble. But I found out he's your ever-present help even in times of joy. Have you ever worshipped without him? It's dry. But when his presence is there, oh my God. That's why I love the choir here. They take us into his presence easy. But they do that because they're fasting and praying. I know we come on Sunday and we just, ooh, wow, ooh, wow, ooh, that's good. <laughs> Here it's not about talent. It's about anointing. And Philip is anointed. And so are all this. You see, that's the thing. That's what's missing in most places. Thank God for you guys. Now he says, as a result, he has brought you to his own presence and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him. Oh, thank God for today. That resurrection. Oh boy. If, when you understand exactly what he did. Romans 5, 9 to 11. Romans 5, 9 to 11 says, And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. What saved you from God's condemnation? The blood. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white. What do you think is washing? Your clothes? <laughs> it, says, it says here, it says, For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. You see, the word of God is so simple. If you know where to look. If you come for Bible study. Because that's how you learn. Amen. 
if you if you take time to to do your devotions when you conclude within yourselves that this life is nothing but a fleeting moment they called me about two days ago they told me someone had died he was okay quote unquote and they took him to the hospital because he had a few pains here and there. He never came home. There are many people like that. They, 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 they are planning for the future without him. Oh, I've got time. See, time was made for you. See, a thousand years were like a day. So how many seconds is really your life? See, today, today, as you rejoice, also reflect. As you're, as you're celebrating with the new dress and the new shoes, and all, also take time to pause and see yourself. Where am I? Because he's coming back. You see, the point is this. What I'm trying to say is that when John was saying, here comes the lamp, he didn't fully understand it. So people are telling you that Jesus is coming back, and you, you don't understand it. But just like he was the lamb, became the lamb, died on the cross, he's coming again. The only difference is when he comes this time, he's coming like himself. Bad to the bones. He's coming. I know he's coming. The question is, do you? And do you live your life like he's coming? What is it that you give the entire world and lose your own soul? How, 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 how is it that you can sit in church all your lives and still go to hell? You might as well just go out and party. You see, what I'm trying to tell you is this, that as he paid that price, there's a price that you also have to pay. What do you do with such a great sacrifice? What do you do? When you really pause and, and really look, you know, someone offered me to watch, uh, what's that movie that, that was done some years ago? The Passion of Christ? Somebody offered me to watch that. I couldn't watch it a second time. Have you, well, how many of you have seen that movie? I couldn't watch it. And that wasn't even real. Yeah, I know. I'm chicken. <laughs> but you see, I understand pain. I won't tell you why. But I understand pain. And, and just to imagine that someone who did only good I just don't get it. Someone who did miracles healed the sick. Someone who, who, who made people who were going through sorrow become happy again and, and have peace in their lives. Someone who did not do anything to anybody and yet people hated him. My. Do you get it? See, because we, 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 we can get lost in all of this Easter stuff. And not focus on what was really done. Have you ever paused to say, God, why? Not, not why that you're in your position, you're in, no. But why that you let this be done? And the answer is right there. For God loved the world so much.
I thank God for today. I do. But every time we go through today, I always wonder how. You, you, you know, you can be in the middle of a million people and be alone. Think, think about it. He's on that cross between two thieves. People <laughs> making fun of him. I've ever been ridiculed before. By people that you know you can wipe out anyhow. And he kept quiet. See, see, there was there was one thing that always gives me gratification is because he trusted his father. He trust he, the trust that he had. If not, he would not have dared it. Not just that, he knew the Holy Spirit was there. That power was coming. That's why they are one. The pain was much, but for the joy of the cross. Today, people won't go to church because, just because. And, and the, the longer the years go, the more people begin to get excuses. But today is a day to reflect, really. Especially if you say you're a Christian. If you say you're a Christian, if you truly say you're a Christian, you must look at it. And, and, and look at what he did. See, the conclusion I had was that God the Father had so ministered to him that he knew. You know, he said, why have you forsaken me? That breaks my heart. It's not something I ever want to hear from my own son. Father, why have you forsaken me? Just hear me with the sins of the entire world upon him. That's why God had to make it where his name is above every other name. He, he earned it. He earned it and they gave it to you for free. Yeah! And that is why you, you take it for granted. Because he gave it to you for free. See, but it wasn't really free, was it? It cost him everything. Second Corinthians five, fifteen to twenty one. Second Corinthians five, fifteen to twenty one. He died for everyone, so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ, who died and was raised for them. Verse sixteen. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now. This means that anyone, anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God. Who brought us back to himself through Christ. Verse 18 says, and God has given us this task. Every single one of us. He has given us this task of reconciling people to him. Not just your pastor. Not just the leaders. Everyone. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. That's what today is really all about. 
reconciliation. Verse 20 says, so we are Christ's ambassador. I want you to look at everybody and say, hey, me, I'm an ambassador. Now, I didn't hear the hey. Hey, me, I'm an ambassador. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ. We speak for Christ. We speak for Christ. We speak for Christ. When we plead, come back to God. Not when I tell you, oh, you know, your dressing, you know, is this, your, your hair is that. That's all man-made rules. I only speak for him when I'm telling you that you need to come back to him. I'm only pleading for him speaking when I tell you that he died for you. That's really what your assignment is. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering of for our sin. <laughs> so that we could be made right with God. Through Christ. Where are you with him? What have you done with this Christ? See, when he was leaving, he, he also made preparation so that you will not be by yourself. He said, don't go anywhere until the Holy Spirit comes. That's how much he cared for you. He's all I need. He's all I need. Jesus is all I need. <laughs> He's all I need. He's all. Is all I need. Is all I need. Is all I need. Jesus is all I need. you to promise yourself that from this day only that which will gladden his heart will you do. People will always tell me it's not easy. Yeah, because you're trying to do it on your own. I was a professional altar goer because everything was always in my own power. I believe that if I can just, people used to tell me I was strong, so I can, I can muscle it. No. All he really needs you to do is to submit. He's all I need. He's all I need. Jesus is all I need. He, he's all, he's all I need. He's all I need. Jesus. The day I, I got that right, I stopped struggling. 
I just let him do what he can do. I, I stopped trying to figure it out. <laughs> See, the devil is crazy. He makes you to think that, nah, you don't need this. He's destroying lives. Destroying lives daily, making you think that you know more than you do. It's, it's, it's because this is so simple. It's too simple. See, but, but that's how God works. I, I want you today to, to let that power that raised Christ from the dead begin to operate in your life. So that you figure on, on the things of God and not on things of man. And you begin to see that everything begins to change. Your language changes. Your thought process changes. The doctor says you're about to die. You tell him, no, no, you don't understand. That is indeed a fact. But I operate on truth. And the truth is this. You shall live and not die. You shall live and declare the glory of God in the land of the living. That is what my word says. Why? Because he says, all power belongs to me. Death has been swallowed up. Ah. But you have to submit first. See, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. But Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God, the one who you are celebrating today. He lives in me. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So I begin to bind and loose. And heaven binds and loose. Why? I begin to walk in victory. I begin to declare a thing. And as I declare, so shall be established. Why? Because all power has been given unto me to walk alongside with Christ Jesus. Who is not just my God, not just my Savior, not just my Lord, but he's my brother. Ha 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 ha! The devil thought he could get me, but it's too late. If he had his way, you wouldn't be here now. If he had his way. Because truth will set you free. Today is all about the truth. Don't let those celebrations cloud your eyes. No, 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 no. Don't let the special rice and beans today cloud your eyes. It's still about eternity. That's why he came. And he paid the price. Boldly. I want you to rise. He's all. Talk to him. Tell him. You are I need. Jesus is all I need. Sing it, sister. He's all. Yes. He's all I need. Yeah. Jesus is all I need. You know, there's a song that came to my mind now. Because he he lives. I can face tomorrow <laughs> because he lives. All fear is gone because I
in life and, and sometimes it takes the faith of another to carry you. it doesn't mean that you don't you don't love God it just means you're in a you're in a valley if only you know the rest that he can give you. That no matter what, because he lives, because I'm his, then my tomorrow is okay. Everything you see in life that men run all over the place is about tomorrow. Just in case there are people here who just need a dose of that resurrection power. I want you to find your way to any one of these pastors and just let them be in agreement for a new season for you. Because he lives. Why don't you come? I can fail. here but if your name starts with a B anybody in here with a name starts with a B oh. okay if your name starts with a B go to Pastor Chad he's going to speak over your life this name starts with a B Kalabaso Tole Kalabas sing whatever brother Libra to Shakata Libaba Father, 
every unclean spirit in this house. Let the fire of God begin to move in this room. Begin to move. Fire of God begin to move in this house. I speak to every generation now curse. Let that fire Go through. Now. Cleanse you. That power. Focus on Christ. Focus on Christ. Forget who's be. Just focus on him right now. And let that power that he releases come into this place now. Today you become a terror to your enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Today you become a what? A terror to your enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Gentlemen, thank you. If there's nobody else. Now I want to declare something so you understand. Only the blessed can be a blessing. Do we agree? Only the blessed can be what? Are you blessed? I want you to begin to declare it. Every good thing you want for yourself. You speak it. Only the blessed can be a blessing. That's why we took care of it. in the first, Before we even started the word, we took care of certain things so that you can declare so that you can enter into the present. I want you to begin to talk to God. Begin to make declaration about your tomorrow. Talk over your children. Talk over your business. Talk, just begin to declare. Talk over yourself. Yes. Only the blessed can be a blessing. Say, Father, from today, I become a blessing. <laughs> uh, you don't understand see a poor man cannot help a poor man mm -hmm. it takes one who has more in his pocket that he can give you have to have something to be able to give say today I'm a blessing I want you to shift your mindset today to a victorious one. Put your hand on your chest. Say, I am healed. No matter what it may look like. No matter what it may feel like. Sickness is on the cross. 
healing is mine i declare it today over myself over my husband over my wife over my children in the name of jesus i say i am blessed The Bible says that everything that comes from your mouth either kills you or gives you life. So today I speak life. Speak it and let everything that can hear, hear. I am blessed and highly favored. This is the best week I'm going into. I am victorious. I am victorious. I am victorious. I am victorious. Make the enemy angry. Let me convince you. If, 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 I, if I take this bottle and let's say it's empty and, and I, I put corn, you know, corn inside of it, we all know that chickens eat corn. But I, I take the corn and I put it inside of it and I put it in the middle of a, a million chickens. Can they get to it? That is you in Christ. That is you in Christ. So when I say make the devil mad, make him mad. He cannot do anything to you. Don't be like those Christians that say, you know, but there's no but in my life. I am blessed and highly favored. I'm above and not beneath. <sighs> Hallelujah. I want to thank God for all of you on this day. It's a good day. It's a good day to be alive. Not just alive, but like my grandfather would say, it's a good day to be alive and on top. Are you on top? Yes. Hallelujah. I want you to look at somebody and say, I got your back. Find, find, especially those who are visiting us for the first time, point at them and say, I got your back. We will be praying for you. The enemy made a mistake of letting you come in here. And we are not afraid of the devil or his cohorts. Amen? Why? Greater is what? Than he? The devil is a liar. I know who I am. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Receive life. You know, many years ago, the devil made that mistake he made today. He let Jesus die. Thinking that was it. He made the same mistake. He let you come here. Thinking that was it. Receive life. You are victorious. You are winning and you are. You are winning and you are. Now you see. Now say this way. I am winning and dominating. Say like an African. You see that? You see, we, we, we have attitude. You have to have some attitude. Hallelujah! Eternal rock of ages, we give you praise. Be thou lifted, O God. Today we remember all that you did and we celebrate you. Let that same power flow into every facet of our lives today and forever. In Jesus' name. Shall we share the grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I see ya. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that message. That message was brought to you so that the power of God, like we said, will be manifested in your lives. I am praying that even as you have watched this, every prayer that was said, every passage of the Bible that was used, it's a blessing to your life. And I'm also believing that because of what you have heard today, or what you have been able to dissect from the Word of God, that you will join us next week. Again, we are at 3655 Fresburg Road, here in San Antonio, Texas, and we will love to see you in person. Be blessed.